And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given all honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
accept, overflowing with joy. We may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word.
about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had com compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and at this time I would ask the young and the young heart to lend me their ears. God loves you. God, God loves you too. Now, today we read about the disciples being called. They're called to go out and tell people about Jesus, and to heal, and to save, and to let people know the closeness of God. That's a pretty big thing, right? A pretty serious thing to be called to do. Well, we're already being called, and I know I do maybe do this too often, but I think it's worth celebrating. We are called to tell people about Jesus and to listen to what God is already up to in the world. And one of the ways we do that is by having God conversations. Now, we had at least one God conversation that I was told about this week. And so we move one more marble from one end to the other. We're getting closer and closer to 120 people who will have been told about the good news of Jesus Christ, or alternatively have told one of us about what God is already up to in the world. And so we may not be called out to go two by two out into all the land to tell people that Jesus is coming on up behind us, but we're still being called to let people know the good news and to help people think and consider what the good news already is in their life. And we can thank God that we are called to tell and to listen about what God is up to in the world. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for calling us, calling this congregation to have holy, God conversations with our neighbors. Please bless each one of us in our hearing and in our telling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time I invite the young and the young at heart to head on out, out for, for Sunday school. Grace, peace, and mercy to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord our Savior, and our friend. Amen. So the calling of the twelve is a height, 
is the height of a pattern that has been well established before the point where we read today. And this pattern is miracle and call, miracle and call, miracle and call. Jesus cleanses the le a leper, he makes well a paralyzed man, and he heals the sick. And then after that, he calls an unnamed disciple to follow him. Similarly, he makes wind and sea to cease its chaos and stills too the inner chaos of two poor possessed souls by performing exorcisms. And then immediately after that, he calls Matthew to be his disciple. Likewise, there is the flurry of healings that we read about last week, which culminate in today's calling of the Twelve. And this happens after Jesus shares a prayer with his disciples, and I dare say he himself prays it as well. He prays, Lord of the harvest, your harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Please send out laborers into your harvest. Let us pray. Mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. <coughs> Lord God, may the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. Yes, Jesus teaches is that Jesus accepts the limitations of the body. Jesus can't be everywhere in first century Palestine, right? That's why he calls these folk out two by two to go out in all the area around him to prepare the way for his message. Now there's a scene in the rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, that I think touches on this point. There's this, mo this moment of pity and compassion, where Norman Jewison's version of Jesus is overwhelmed by a sea of lepers and the sick and the poor. And they're all asking him to touch them. And they wash over Jesus. And he shouts to He also shouts to that crowd who's overwhelming him. There are too many of you. There is too little of me. In Matthew's account, Jesus prays to his Father, Lord of the harvest, your heart to the, the disciples around him that he's preaching to. And he answers this prayer with 12 disciples who become something more than simply followers. They become apostles. They become those who are sent out. God answers his prayers. And so Jesus authorizes these disciples to go out and to do as Jesus did. Go to the lost and remind them of God's closeness and graciously heal the hurting, restore the lost, and go out lightly with nothing to offer save that Jesus first gave you the peace of his presence. Receive the hospitality of those whom you minister to. Be ready for dangers and disappointments. Vulnerable, just as Christ accepted the vulnerability of being human. Lord of the harvest, your harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Please send out laborers into your harvest. Here a second time what is being prayed by our Lord here. The house that is burning is salvageable, but there aren't many good firefighters. So ask the captain of the fire station to send more firefighters into the bubble. The need is great, the workers are few, 
The world needs to hear and to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord of the harvest, your harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Please send out laborers into your harvest. Hear yet again a sliver of what is being said with this prayer. Now, one of the things that the pastor doesn't like to do, but is constitutionally required to do, is to regularly review the congregation's roles in preparation to clean them. After all, our claim that we have 490 members might be stretching the facts a little bit. Our initial review seems to suggest we're much closer to 130 members. Now, that means there are 360 members who we've lost somewhere along the way. The, that number represents a bunch of folk who are separated from the fellowship of their baptism. At least some of them are folks who are harassed, harried, and hurt. After all, I think that is part of the human condition. That's part of why we need to regularly hear the gospel and be reminded that God loves us. Because life is tough. And in fact, some cases they've been harassed, harried, and hurt by the church itself. These are folk, these 360 people, who may need to hear words of repentance or reconciliation or restoration. Imagine Jesus authorizing all of us to reach out to our siblings, separated in so many different ways, and offer them the peace of Jesus Christ. Lord of the harvest, your harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Please send out laborers into your harvest. Perhaps that last example was a little too high in the sky, right? I mean, how are you going to find these 360 people, all of that? Well, in the last few weeks, I've been thinking about our ministry here at Spruce Run what we're up to as a congregation. And to be clear, no, nothing to worry about. Like, this happens every summer. I'd say every, every pastor in existence, sometime after Pentecost, takes a little time, finally has at least a few minutes to catch your breath and look around and ask, what has just happened in these last seven months? The mad rush from Advent to the end of the Easter season. And I think I can describe what we're about here at Spruce Run. I think I can describe what's happened in these last seven months with three words, grace, love, and gospel. Or maybe three action words work better. Receive, rejoice, reach out. We've received God's grace in worship and in faith formation. Lenten Vespers and weekly Sunday school and everything in between. We've loved one another, rejoiced together in times of fellowship, shared meals and shared moments. We've spread the good news, reached out with the gospel, through acts of service, outreach, and evangelism. Now, when we receive, rejoice, and reach out, we're embodying the kingdom of heaven has come near. We're part of God's answer to Jesus' prayer, this prayer that he shares with the disciples that Matthew thinks is so uniquely important that he makes sure it's there in the Gospels and we can read it thousands of years later. Lord of the harvest, your harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
Please send out laborers into your harvest. Now, as I said, Matthew establishes a pattern. Miracle, call, miracle, call, miracle, call. Jesus goes out to make God's good presence known. Then Jesus sends out twelve, two by two, the good news present in six separate places. And then the 70 are sent out two by two as well, gospel in 35 places, calling in the lost sheep of Israel. But the pattern does not end there. Instead, it ends at the very last chapter of Matthew's gospel. The final miracle, Jesus' resurrection. And then, the call expands exponentially. It, it expands across time and space. The call is given new life when the risen Christ comes and he says, Go and make disciples of all nations. Remember, I am with you always. To the end of the age. Calling the disciples then out into all the world and calling across time to us in this very moment. And so I'll leave you with that prayer of Jesus one final time. Lord of the harvest, your harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Please send out laborers into your harvest. Amen.
Let us suffer our prayers. Let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news. Bring healing where there is pain and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all the labor on the land to produce the harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And especially for those who serve in the military, Sammy, Joshua, Marshall, Nicholas, Cooper, Justin, Devin. And for those who govern, we pray. Empower those who speak peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or for freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick, especially Bill, Setsuko, Walter, Paul, Ross, Robin, Sean, Lance, Pat, Bonnie, Erin, Lowry, Christina, Susie, Stephen, Brett, Jim, Sue, June, Julie, Gary, Mary. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care for those who have died and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people a new life. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. 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 Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. 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 Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. 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 O God, your breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, your bread, feed us with yourself. O God, your wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O God, your fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most noble. O God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. 